Today's uh, compensation management will tackle about Chapter 6 entitled Person Based Structure. Uh, this uh, uh, chapter will describe the processes, the techniques, and methods used to evaluate jobs to build a person based uh, internal pay structure. Uh, in today's uh, new work culture, employees are being told that they must go beyond the tasks specified uh, in their job descriptions. So going be, be beyond their uh, given task. A uh, pay system that supports continuous learning and improvement, flexibility, participation, and partnership are claimed to be essential for, for achieving a competitive advantage in the global environment. Uh, the person-based uh, structures provide promise. And the logic is uh, it supports uh, the approaches that is uh, uh, structure based on differences uh, in people's skills or competencies and will be more flexible and will uh, encourage agility. Now, uh, two approaches to building a person-based uh, structure are discussed. Number one is the skill-based and number two is the competency-based. Now, no matter the basis for the structure, uh, the major decision focuses on the ways to uh, collect and summarize information about the nature of the work and then determine what is uh, of value to the organization and quality uh, number tra number three is the quant uh, to quantify that, uh, that 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 value you know that is uh, being assessed and determined and then translate that value into an internal structure now uh, Similarities in the logic uh, underlying job-based uh, versus people-based approaches are highlighted even you know, in the chapter. Now, the chapter will also include uh, with a discussion on the usefulness of the various approaches, the job and person-based for determining the internal structures. Now, what is our objectives in our learning process this time uh, in the chapter? Now, after discussing Chapter 6, uh, you will be able to discuss the differences and similarities uh, between job-based structures, uh, skill-based plans, and uh, complete competency-based uh, plans. And then also, after discussing the chapter, you will be able to identify uh, the major decisions involved um, in developing skill-based plans and uh, competency-based plans even. And then you will also be able to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of the employee involvement in the evaluation of work. And then we will also be able to understand the key aspects that is associated with the administration of a job evaluation plan. Now also the chapter uh, discussion will give us an ample uh, aid now for us to be able to discuss and describe the, the key criteria to assess the usefulness of the results of each of the approaches to the evalu job evaluation. And uh, also the chapter will give us and uh, aiming us to be able to discuss the two sources of bias affecting job evaluation and the methods to reduce this. So these are the things that uh, we are expecting to be able to know. Now, uh, the person-based structure uh, skills plan uh, many ways to create the internal structure. So how does it go? Now the definition, uh, the definition of uh, the skill-based structure link uh, pay to the depth or breadth of the skills, abilities, and knowledge a person acquires that are relevant to work. Now structures based on skill pay individuals for all the skills. Uh, for which they have been certified, regardless of whether the work they are doing uh, requires all or, or just a few of those particular skills. Now, the weight attaches to the person, uh, in contrast, a job-based plan pays employees for the job uh, to which they are assigned, regardless of the skills they possess. Now, the types of the skills plans. Now, how do we determine it? Now, so, skills plans can focus on depth or the, uh, or the breadth of skills, the abilities, uh, the knowledge a person possesses. 
Now, specialists of depth. Uh, this approach bases pay on the depth of skills, its abilities, and the knowledge of a person. An example is uh, elementary or uh, high school teachers. Uh, their pay is based on the knowledge of the individual doing the job rather than on job content or output. So there. And then generalist multi-skill based. That is the breadth. Breadth. No? Breadth. Yeah. This approach based uh, pay on the range of knowledge specific to a group of related jobs okay now how do we differentiate it the pay increases come with certification of new skills rather than with job assignments and then employees can then be assigned to any of the jobs for which they are certified uh, based on the flow of work and then responsibilities assigned to an employee in a multi-skill system can change drastically over a short period of time. For example, on the same day work day, on the same work day rather, whereas the basic responsibilities of specialists do not actually vary on the on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, what is the purpose of the skill-based structure? Now, it supports the strategy and objectives. Now, the skills uh, on which uh, to base a structure need to be directly related to the organization's objectives and strategies. And then another purpose is support the workflow. And one of the main advantages of skill-based plan is that it facilitates matching people to the changing workflow. And then number three uh, purpose of the skill base is the fair is fair to employees now employees like uh, potential of higher pay uh, I'm sorry uh, employees like the potential of higher pay definitely uh, that comes with learning even uh, so that would enhance their capacity to learn and then by encouraging employees to take a charge of their own de development uh, the skill based plan may also give them more control over their work lives and then, however, favoritism and bias may play a role in determining who gets first uh, the training uh, yeah, ad advantages uh, and necessary to become uh, certified at a higher paying skills level. So there will be, you know, some decisions that are biases you know, in, in this context. Also, uh, the courts may not have been directed on rule on the legality of having two people do the same uh, task but different skills uh, based pace. You know, it could be uh, differ in terms of uh, compensation you know, but then apparently doing the same skills based you know, yeah, uh, job. Now it motivates uh, another, uh, another purpose of the skills uh, based structure is motivates behavior towards uh, obtaining you know, the, the organizational objectives. Now, the person-based plan have the potential to clarify, clarify new standards and behavioral expectations. Now, skill-based plans encourages employees even to take their responsibility more broadly. Uh, for example, for the complete work processes and its results. So, what happened? With less emphasis on direction uh, from supervisors. No? So, that's one way. No? But then, however, supervisors sometimes might not share the same enthusiasm with the employee's concern as it moves uh, its direction making responsibility from them to the employees okay so that is how uh, some purpose of the skill based structure plan now uh, skills analysis no the how to is part of the skill analysis now we define what skill analysis is uh, it is a systematic process of identifying and collecting information about skills required to perform work in an organization. Now, determining the internal skill-based structure. So, how do we do that? Now, these are the factors that are needed in the decisions 
are similar to those in designing job-based structure. So number one, establish the objective of the plan. Number two, determine the information to collect. Number three, decide on the methods to determine and certify the skills. And then number four, decide who should be involved. And then number five, evaluate the usefulness of the results for pay design purposes. Now, you would ask, uh, what information to collect? What are the information needed? Now, what information to collect? So, there is less uniformity you know, in, in, in the use of term in personal-based plan than there is a job-based plan. You know, so, that's the difference. Now, the kind of, inform of information that underpins the skill-based plan are very specific, uh, which make them particularly suited for continuous flow technologies where employees work in teams. So that is uh, part of the information that are needed. Now, uh, in a uh, technician skill-based structure, uh, what are needed? You're talking about technician and skill-based structure. Who and whom to involve? So these are employees where in, uh, employee involvement is almost uh, built into skill-based uh, plans. And uh, managers and employees are the source of information on defining the skills arranging them into the hierarchical uh, yeah, requirements, bundling them into uh, skill blocks, and certifying whether a person actually possesses the skills. Okay? Now, establish certification methods. Now, it's another, uh, it's another, uh, yeah, who's going to be, uh, yeah, who's going to be, uh, uh, yeah, part of the technician skill-based structure. Establish certification methods. Certification methods are necessary um, to determine if employees possesses the required skills that are able to apply on the, for, uh, apply them. And then the certification also applies uh, practically or practices ver uh, vary the vary wa and they vary now widely. Uh, they include the peer review uh, on the job demonstration. Uh, uh, test and formal courses for certification and many more no? and then the changes in uh, the approach to certify are occurring no? in the organization and in the industry now newer skill based application appear to be moving away from an on demand review and towards scheduling that is fixed review points in a year or oh, scheduling reviews make it easier uh, to uh, to uh, to budget and control payroll expenses, and then also these changes in the approach to certification. Uh, the cha uh, other changes include ongoing recertification, again re recertification, and removal of certification even, and accompanying uh, there no? when a particular skill is deemed obsolete. Okay, so no need to, no, no, you decide. Now, what about the outcomes of skill-based plans, skill-based pay plans? It's a guidance from the research and experience. So what are these used? Now, the skill-based plan are well accepted by employees because the connection between plan, work, and the size of paycheck are easy to uh, see. Uh, thus, the... Um, these plans provide strong motivation for the individuals to actually increase their skills and then learn to earn. That's it. You know? It's a popular slogan in the inside the organization. By 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 learning a lot of skills, you, know? you earn in different fields, and you will be uh, provided an opportunities after. Now, even the skill-based plans become increasingly expensive as the majority of employees become certified at the higher or highest pay levels now included. Now the employer may have an average higher than competitors who are not using skill-based plan and unless the increased flexibility permits learner, st uh, learner staffing, the employer may experience higher labor cost. Now in firms with labor-intensive products uh, the increased labor costs under skill-based plans could uh, become 
a competitive disadvantage. Okay? Now, research on the type of workplace uh, best suited for skill-based plan indicates the following results. So, what are these results? Uh, number one is the longevity of skill-based plans. 60% uh, in the original sample were still using skill-based plans seven years later. Okay? And then one of the key factors determining a plan's a success was how was how well it was aligned with organization strategy. Okay? Now, the plans were more viable in organizations following a, a cost-cutter strategy. And then another one, uh, this brings us to the question, is a multi-skilled individual a master of none? And some research suggests that uh, the greatest impact on results occur immediately after just a small amount of uh, increased flexibility. So therefore, more skills not necessar may not necessarily improve productivity. And uh, additionally, some employees may not be interested in giving up the recent, uh, yeah, present jobs. Come first, now we call it, and we're creating a bottleneck for the job rotation process. Okay, so there. And then the bottom line is that skills-based approaches may um, may be only short-term initiatives for specific, for specific settings. But as with any other paid techniques, uh, the key, uh, they do not appear suitable for all situations. Okay. Now, what about the person-based structure that is based on competencies? Confusion exists over what competencies are and what they are supposed to accomplish. Now, are competencies a skill uh, that can be learned and developed or are they a trait that includes attitudes and motives now so that's one of the confusions and then another one is that do they focus on the minimum requirements that uh, the organization needs to stay in business or on or on outstanding performances Okay, so these are the things that uh, bothers and not the competencies. And then, another one is that are they characteristics uh, of the organizations or uh, of the employees? So there, no? So this is part of the confusion existing, no? The, what competencies are. And uh, at the present time, um, the answer to all of the above question is yes. Okay. And a lack of consensus means that competencies can be a number of things. Consequently, they stand in danger of becoming nothing. Okay. Now, determining the internal competency-based structure. How do we do that? So, all, uh, all approaches to creating a structure begin by examining the work. The work that is being performed in an organization. Now, while job, uh, while, while job and skill-based systems uh, focus on information about specific uh, tasks, the competency uh, approach takes the opposite approach. Okay, so contrasting. Now, identification of competencies involves examining the organization for underlying broadly applicable knowledge, skills, and behaviors can, uh, that form no, the foundation for successful work performance at any level or job in the organization. Now, these are core competencies and often linked to an organization's mission, objectives, values, business strategies, and plans. Okay, core competencies. Uh, okay, now, now the com what is uh, needed? No? Competency sets. What is competency sets? So it translates no, its core competency into action. For example, for the core competency of business awareness, competency sets uh, might be indicative of organization understanding, cost management, third party relations, and ability to identify the business opportunities. 
Now, competency indicators is another one. So, the, the indicators are the observ observable uh, behaviors. Uh, behaviors that indicate the level of competency within its set. And they may be used for staffing and evaluation, as well as for the pay purposes even. Now, they also anchor the, anchor the degree of a competency that is required at its level of complexity of work. And scale competency indicators are similar to job analysis questionnaires and degrees of compensa compensable factors. Okay? Now we go to, uh, yeah, the defining competencies. Now the sample behavioral competency indicators. Now these are the sample behavioral competency indicators. So what are needed in defining the uh, competencies? Now, number one is the early conception of competencies that is focused on five areas. So what five areas are these? Number one is skills that demonstrates uh, uh, expertise. Number two is knowledge that accumulates uh, information. Number three is self-concept. Self-concept uh, refers to the attitudes, values, and branding and image, self-image. And then number uh, four is uh, traits. Uh, the general disposition to behave uh, in, a, in a certain way, in a certain situation. And then number five uh, in the definition of competencies is uh, motives, which is recurrent uh, through uh, recurrent thoughts that drive uh, behavior. So these are the defining competencies. Now, as experience with competencies have grown, um, organizations are moving away from the vagueness of self-concepts and concentrating more on business-related descriptions of behavior. Uh, behaviors that uh, excellent performers exhibit much more consist consistently and, uh, than average performers. Now, competencies are being viewed as a collection of observable behaviors and that's that, that include not a single behavior and that require no inference or assumption or interpretation so there now we go to the purpose of the uh, competency based structure okay the purpose of the competency-based structure. Now, the ability of competencies to support an internally aligned structure is now being assessed according to the following criteria. So, number one is the organization strategy. Now, the main appeal of competencies in the direct link to the organization strategy. So, that is, uh, yeah, that's it. And, also, and then the process of identifying competencies begins uh, with the company leadership leadership that is deciding what will be the result you know, in success for the company and then an example of a, a product in frito lays uh, frito lays use of a competency based structure for managerial work is being provided to illustrate how this approach can be used to support an organization strategy okay now, uh, what happens in a Frito-Lay, no? managerial competencies? Uh, okay, number one is a workflow. Uh, first is the organizational strategy, which we have started uh, a while ago. The main appeal of the competencies, linking the organization strategy, that's organization strategy. And then number two is workflow. Now, in the Frito-Lay, uh, management competencies. Now, workflow is competencies are identified to uh, ensure that all the critical needs of the organization are met. The emphasis is on comp competence that will transcend workflow. Uh, competencies are more loosely applied to work requiring more tacit knowledge, such as the uh, managerial and professional work. Now, Next is the fair, is it fair to the employees? Now, fair to employees. Now, free to lay advocates of competencies says that they can empower employees 
uh, to take charge of their own development if they feel that there's a fair net not employees now by focusing on optimum uh, performance rather than the average performance competencies can help employees maintain their marketability however uh, critics contend that uh, basing pay on personal uh, competencies will create risk uh, or uh, uh, on personal traits poses challenges rather so it poses challenges uh, at that stage and then trying to uh, justify pay differences based on inferred competencies will create risks that need to be managed okay now motivate behavior toward organization objectives now is one is another one no? competencies provide uh, the guidelines for behavior that en enable people to remain in focus and they provide a common uh, basis for communication and as organizations glow global global this has become a challenge since senior positions are filled by employees who differ in their viewpoints and experience okay now we discuss the how to competency analysis competency analysis the how to uh, how to is the first decision and by the far by uh, uh, by the far the most important no is to clarify the objective of the plan so by knowing the objective we'll be able to uh, yeah uh, dispense another uh, how to as the first decision to be made now objective now so uh, uh, the vagueness and the subjectivity of the competencies continue to uh, make them a risky foundation for a pay system no? for the objective however competencies may have value for uh, personal development and communicating communicating uh, organization directions okay it is also important to realize that the competency structure existing on paper needs to correlate to uh, what work employees will be doing or do now what information to uh, to collect uh, one approach to classify competencies uh, will involve using three categories you now for the information to collect okay number uh, number one is the personal characteristic you now these are the information that are needed you now for you to be able to yeah determine employees are expected to bring organization relevant characteristics such as uh, the personal integrity for one uh, maturity you know, is also being measured uh, in judgment you know, maturity of judgment and then the flexibility you know, for them to be able to dispense you know, accordingly relationship you know, for being flexible and respect for others is important you know, in your correlations and then the employees then develop and demonstrate these uh, characteristics in increasingly complex and ambiguous job situation even so these are needed you no know? and then well, yeah an organization need uh, that information you no know, for for them to be able to assess correctly another one after the personal characteristic is the visionary so these are the highest level competencies you know? being having being a, a visionary and this includes possessing a global perspective taking initiative to move the organization into a new direction or new directions even and the ability to articulate the implications for the organization of trends in the marketplace for example and so and so on and so forth now organizations specific also no? that's another organization specific so what do you mean so these are specifically tied to the particular organization and to the particular function where they are being applied and then the organization specific also will generally include leadership uh, customer orientation functional expertise and developing others okay so that is organization specific now uh, we go to the one example of uh, 3m 
what happens there? 3M uh, leadership competencies uh, is a good example. Now, behavioral anchors for global perspective competency. Okay? So, these uh, competencies stem from an organization mission or strategy. It may be uh, concluded that they would be unique for each company. And this is, however, not the case. Because one analysis indicated that most companies appear to choose from the same list of 20 core competencies even. Okay? Now, the top 20 companies, no? so the, uh, since competencies do not differ, uh, how can they be a source of competitive advantage? So, the difference appear to be based on how companies implement competencies in their daily operations. Now, whom to involve? A common practice is to derive competencies from the executive leadership's beliefs about the organization and its strategic intent. However, uh, anecdotal evidence indicates not all employees understand the uh, connection. And thus, the uh, initial promise of uh, simplicity and flexibility in person-based structure remains unfulfilled. Okay. Uh, another one is established certification method. Uh, and the heart of a person-based plan, person-based plan, is that employees are paid for the relevant competencies they possess, whether or not these skills are used. So there, no? By establishing certification method. Now, with competency-based plans, if people are to be paid based on their competencies, then uh, there must be a way to demonstrate or certify uh, all concern that a person possesses that level of competency. However, uh, advocates of competencies are relatively silent on the topic of certification since a process of to objectivity, objectively rather, objectively certify whether an employee possesses a competency has not been determined. Although uh, a 360 degree uh, feedback and personal development are supposed to be uh, consistent with competencies. Now, what are the resulting structure? Okay, so the resulting structure, competency-based structure generally, are designed with relatively few levels, four to six, and relatively wide differentials for increased flexibility. And consequently, a generic structure such as uh, there now uh, could be applied almost in any professional work, even the work of a university faculty. So that is the resulting structure. And the uh, competencies and the uh, employee selection and training development. You now, how does it go? So there is a clear evidence that ability is related to general competencies. And the uh, researchers have uh, identified a set of uh, generic competencies that is called the Great Eight, Great Number Eight, which captures the themes found in an array of competency frameworks. Uh, what are these frameworks? Uh, these eight uh, characteristics seem to be related to the Big Five personality traits. Okay. So when employees are not screened based on these characteristics, so it will lead to more pressure, pressure on training and development. Uh, it also will lead to demotivation eventually, since employees who wish to uh, to acquire such competencies would uh, would be more would be unable to do so. Uh, in such cases, competency base uh, will become inefficient. Okay, so what are the guidance coming from the research on competencies? Okay, arguments exist on whether competencies can be translated into a measurable objective basis for pay. Okay, given the abstract nature of the topic, minimal empirical research exists. Okay, only one study has analyzed 
the competencies, performances, relationship for managers. Wherein, uh, they are related to managers' performance ratings, but there is no relationship to unit level performance provided. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. An area of research which, uh, with potential application to uh, a competent disease deals with intellectual cap capital and knowledge management. So, uh, viewing competencies of an organization's employee as a portfolio highlights the fact that not all competencies are unique or equally valuable strateg strategically. And then, the focus changes to uh, managing existing competencies and developing new ones in ways that maximizes the overall success of an organization. Now, the basic question remains, uh, is it appropriate to pay you for what I believe you are capable of doing or versus what you are doing? So that's the basic question, and it remains that way. Okay. Okay. Internal alignment that is reflected in structures. No, no. Okay. The purpose of job and uh, person-based approaches is to design and manage an internal pay structure uh, that helps the organization succeed. It must also reflect an organization's internal alignment policy. Okay? Uh, that could be loosely versus tightly linked, egalitarian versus hierarchical. And then support its business operation. So that's the purpose uh, of job and person-based approaches. Uh, in addition to man to in addition actually, so uh, managers must ensure uh, the structure remains internally aligned by reassessing the work, the skills, the competencies when necessary. Now, failure to do so, uh, risk structures, lack of strategies, work performance related, uh, related uh, logic, which opens the doors to bias, unethical, uh, and misdirected behaviors. In reality, the distinction between job-based versus person-based approaches blurs when evaluating higher value non-routine work comes along and the focus is on the factors uh, on both job and the person that creates the value for the organization. Now, uh, since uh, the job content in managerial and professional work is influenced by that person, uh, skill based fits more easily with manufacturing work. However, uh, much of the work required in contemporary manufacturing um, requires tacit, uh, non-routine knowledge, problem solving, uh, interacting and negotiating included. Now we go to the plan, no? Administri uh, administering the plan. No, a critical issue is the fairness of the administration of the plan. Now details of the plan should be described in a comprehensive manner including all information necessary to apply the plan. So what are these? Uh, definitions of compensable factors are needed. For example, uh, job-based system. And the another one is the degrees or details of skills, skills blocks, competencies, and certification methods for certain-based systems. Okay? And then another one is the online tools uh, can be engaged and developed for managers uh, to learn about the plans and apply them accordingly. Okay? And another crucial issue is... Uh, Employee acceptance, employee acceptance that can uh, facilitate by communication and employee involvement in the design of the plan. Now, what is the evidence on the usefulness of the results? 
Okay, the usefulness of the pay structure, whether uh, job-based or person-based, based should be evaluated in terms of uh, how well it, it achieves and aligns with, with the objectives of the organization. Now, in most studies, uh, the job-based evaluation is treated as a uh, measurement device and research assessing its reliability, its validity, its validity uh, uh, considering the cost and its compliance with the laws and regulations, the value addition even, if there is any, and added by job evaluation has been largely ignored. That is in most studies about job uh, evaluation. Now, research on person-based structures tend to focus on their effects on behaviors and organization objectives and ignores doubts on reliability and validity. Now, what is reliability of job evaluation techniques? Okay, a reliable evaluation would be one where different evaluators produce the same results. You could just imagine different evaluators that produces the same results. So that's reliability. Now, one way to improve reliability will also involve using evaluators who are familiar with the work and trained uh, in the evaluation process. So that is important. Familiar with the work. Now, another one approach is to increase the reliability involved is the use of group consensus. So what are these group consensus? Each evaluator makes a preliminary independent evaluation. And then afterwards, evaluators uh, will discuss the results until the consensus emerges. So there's a consultation between the two. And then another one, although results of the consensus seems uh, to make the results acceptable, um, Studies should show that the group consensus were resort, results uh, are not significantly different from those obtained from independent evaluators or by averaging even and can be influenced by, what are these, forceful or experienced persons on the committee. And then the knowledge uh, about the person's present salary level. So these are, yeah, time uh, consensus. No? And then another one is the online HR toolkit. Toolkit, no, HR. So, or shared services. So shared services are replacing job evaluation committees. So, and however, uh, we question even uh, their validity and reliability have not been proven and doesn't have any uh, uh, been studied yet. Okay, so that is reliability of job evaluation techniques. Now we go to the validity. Now, what is the, valid, the validity? Now, uh, we, we define the validity uh, that is referring to the degree uh, to which the job evaluation assesses what is supposed to the relative worth of jobs to an organization. Now, validity of job evaluation can be measured in two ways. Number one is by agreement, and then the degree, the degree of agreement between rankings and that resulted from job evaluation compared to an agreed upon ranking of benchmarks used as the criterion. Okay, now by heat rates is another one. Heat rates is the degree to which job evaluation plan matches matches the heats an agreed upon pay structure for benchmark jobs. Okay. Uh, the agreed upon ranking or pay structure for both cases can be established by organization uh, leadership or be based on external market data, uh, negotiations with uh, unions, or the market rates for benchmarks, uh, which is held predominantly by mostly men to eliminate discrimination or some combination of this okay 
And uh, many studies uh, will show very similar rankings of jobs, but very low hits rates. And they disagree on how much to pay the jobs. Now, the definition of validity needs uh, to be broadened to include the impact on pay decisions. And how the results are judged depends on the standards used for managing compensation. The correct standard is the pay structure. What job holders get paid rather than simply the job's ranks order. So there. So that is validity. Now we go to acceptability. Uh, several methods are used to assess uh, and improve employee acceptability. So num uh, number one is the formal appeal process. Uh, in the formal appeals process, employees who believe their jobs are evaluated incorrectly should be able to request reanalysis and or skills re-evaluation. And then another one is the employee attitude survey. This can be used to assess perceptions of how useful evaluation is as a management tool. Okay, so that is uh, acceptability. Uh, is there any bias in internal structures? Okay, so <laughs> there. So, but then, uh, bias in internal structures, and how does it happen? So, differences in jobs held by men, women, and people of color, and the accompanying pay differences have focused attention on internal structures as a possible source of discrimination. Okay? So, there. And much of this attention has focused on job evaluation as both a potential source of bias against women and a mechanism to reduce bias even. Now, uh, a lot of research has already been uh, conducted and research indicates that the following findings. There is an evidence, uh, the evidence does not support the proposition that the gender of an individual job holder influences the evaluation of the job. And then there is no evidence the job evaluator's gender affects the result. And there is no evidence also that indicates that compensable factors related to job content, for example, contact with others and judgment, did reflect bias against work done predominantly by women. But by those pertaining to employee requirements, example, uh, what are these requirements? So, education and experience. Okay, so there. Uh, wages criteria bias. So, what are these? Okay, the second potential source of bias affects a job evaluation indirectly through current wages paid for jobs. So, in this case, job evaluation results may be biased if uh, the jobs held predominantly by women are currently underpaid. So therefore, job evaluation results may simply mirror any bias in the current pay rates. Now, the following are recommendations to ensure that job evaluation and job evaluation plans are bias-free. So what are these? Define the compensable factors and scales to include the content of jobs held predominantly by women specifically and ensure that factor way are not consistent bias against jobs held predominantly by women and apply the plan in a bias-free in manner as feasible ensure that the job description are bias-free that exclude incumbent names from the job evaluation process and train diverse evaluators now, another one is uh, all issues concerning job evaluation also apply to skill and competency-based plans. And unfortunately, no studies of gender affects in skill-based or competency-based plans that is, 
that exist. And uh, yeah, that's it. No, uh, the contrasting uh, approaches. Okay, so there are contrasting approaches. Uh, pay increases will logically encourage employees to uh, focus on how to get promoted no? by having training, performance reflected, you know, and on how to acquire required skills or competencies. No? Again, training, learning, depending on the job base or present base structures. Now, a job base approach controls cost by uh, paying only as much as the work performed is worth. Uh, regardless of any greater skills no, the employees may possess um, and it will suggest that costs are controlled by uh, job rates or work assignment and budgets related another one is the skills competency you know? so based on plans pay employees uh, for the highest level of skills competency they have achieved no, regardless of the work they perform they maximize flexibility while encouraging employees to become certified at top rates. Now, the organization may experience increased labor costs if it cannot control the rate at which employees get certi certified. The key to offset the higher rates with greater productivity, uh, in addition to having higher rates and higher training costs or skills competencies based plans may become as complex and as uh, burdensome as base job based plans plans and then additionally the compliance with the uh, US equal pay you no know, uh, act is actually being questioned or is in question okay uh, the best approach uh, depend on the situation uh, providing uh, sufficient ambiguity to afford flexibility to adapt to changing conditions and be considered. Now, too generic an approach may not uh, provide sufficient detail. Uh, details to make clear the link between pay, between work, and results. Uh, too detailed an approach may become even rigid. Okay? So that is generic. Uh, the, too generic. Now, uh, Base for pay that are too vaguely defined will have no credibility with employees because yeah it's not clear and will fail to signal what is most important for success and may lead to suspicion of favoritism and bias. Now an internally aligned pay structure, whether strategically loosely linked or tightly fitting can be designed as follows uh, defined and designed to help determine pay the wide variety of work in the organization ensure that pay influences people's attitude and work behaviors and directs them towards organization objectives okay so uh, I guess uh, I have already discussed no, uh, pertinent uh, lessons on uh, person based structures of the compensation chapter 6 person based structure okay thank you very much and see you again in my next uh, uh, class discussion